Hey, what's up guys, I'm Josh, and today we're going to be talking about the AirPods Max. This is gonna be the full review. Now, I've made a couple other videos on this. I did a first impressions, and I also did a kind of an extended conversation with Jonathan Morrison revolving around this headphone. Uh, I really enjoyed that talk, and I think you would too. There's gonna to be a link to that video in the description down below. There's also gonna be a link to Jonathan's channel, uh, and he actually did send out these headphones for me to review. So, thanks again, Jonathan. So here's a quick summary of this product. Apple has put a premium price tag on a product that is arguably the best for its collective classification and features. And it may not be the best in any particular category of any other product that has that, but it is the best collectively, I think. And Apple is more than happy to charge you for it. Now, of course, in the build, we see very Apple design styling, you know, rounded edges, really nice tolerances, uh, the aluminum finish, the steel headband. No, it's very Apple in the design. There's some crossover from some other designs as well, like the Apple Watch and the digital crown that's on the top. This is a very dense, well-made, nice feeling product. Now you really actually notice the build quality of this when you put this up against comparable products like the XM4. XM4 is not really comparable in price being a little under half, but in terms of features, it's kind of got the same spec sheet feature set as the Max does. And I'll be comparing a little bit throughout this review of this, but just keep an, keep an eye on that price tag difference. Now I've been hearing mixed things between these two headphones for their comfort. Um, I actually much prefer personally the Max. Uh, I find the headband is very comfortable for me and the pads, despite being a pad I didn't initially think I would like, I actually quite like the uh, the pads that this comes with. Now the XM4, while a obvious step down in terms of build quality being primarily plastic, does have the benefit of being significantly lighter than that of the Max. Uh, but for me, the thinner headband is not as comfortable and these pads actually get quite hot for me personally, though I've seen various things from other people, some people not bothered by it at all. But for me, don't like the pads very much on this. Now, as far as the Max's pads, um, they're kind of strange actually. So they seem like fabric, like when you touch them, they and they are fabric on the outside, but they sort of act like a leather pad in terms of like the seal. So when you actually put this on your head and you don't have any noise cancellation or the pass-through mode on, it actually seals quite nicely in a way that a typical fabric pad would not. So you're getting isolation that is, in my opinion, equivalent to leather or faux leather pads like on the XM4. Also, this pad is slightly complicated because it's not just a ring like a normal pad is. Uh, they actually do have this kind of basket weave design that fits nicely into the actual ear cups. Now, while you could pick up an aftermarket solution eventually, um, they're probably gonna cost a little bit more than replacement pads for like an XM4 might be. The one and only thing I don't love about the build of this headphone is gonna be the digital crown. I wish there was some sort of like audio feedback in terms of a clicking or maybe even a feeling of a, a minor click or a slight vibration when you actually move the digital crown, but I find it difficult to have granular control in a hurry. So like if you're just reaching up really fast to bring up or bring down the volume, you might actually bring it down further or bring it up further than you intended. So it's an elegant solution that sacrifices some level of control over alternative solutions. I think something simple that Apple could do to fix this, not that they're gonna listen to me, but maybe some added resistance to this crown to make it a little bit harder to turn would be a little bit better. Uh, but as of right now, it's really easy to skyrocket the volume by accident. Now, a big thing with this headphone that I'm going to be talking about uh, repeatedly here is this headphone, it's got like this active EQ, which we'll talk about more in a second, but basically what it does is it measures the position and the size and probably the shape of your ear and kind of provides a, a sort of an EQ based off of your ear shape. Now, everything around this headphone works like that. So that's the EQ for music, that's the EQ for spatial audio, pass-through audio, and things like noise cancellation. So what I've found with this, talking to other people, is that the results vary quite widely just depending on your ears. And I will say this, and as a slight disclaimer here, 
I seem to be very lucky with this thing because the performance across the board for anything revolving that sort of thing has actually been incredible. So some of the features here are, in my opinion, legitimately groundbreaking, not because they're the first implementation of their kind, but because they're the best implementation so far of their kind. And this is all to say that the noise cancellation has, in my opinion, reached pinnacle performance for uh, every headphone I've heard. It's not completely silent, you can still hear things, um, but it's the best implementation that I've been able to get so far. And we're gonna play a simulation of what I feel like I experience when I'm listening to this, but just know that your mileage could vary. Now there is a little bit of a noise floor in all of the modes except for off. So if you do the pass through audio or the noise cancellation, there's a little bit of a hissing, but if you're in any sort of environment where you would want that, you're probably not gonna hear the hissing because it's actually fairly low. Uh, the actual noise floor for the general amplification is very low, but it is slightly audible if you're in a really quiet environment and you have uh, and, and you're listening for it, you can pick it up. Now I wanna talk about spatial audio and here is my uh, first reaction to hearing this on this for the first time. kind of cool actually. The voices are a little funky though, like like uh, there's definitely some some kind of echo room environment addition that, that's kind of going on with it. Uh, but it, I think this is gonna be a really cool tool for certain people to use. I do wanna say this, this sort of kind of three dimensional sound is very cool. It's very unique, it's uh, pretty rare. There's not too many headphones that do it and definitely fewer that do it well. And this does it fairly well, but it does have some limitations. And the biggest limitation I find is content. Uh, and you have to work with specific apps and even specific content within those apps that have it. So for example, Disney Plus will have, you know, The Mandalorian, which is what I was watching, and a bunch of movies in 5.1, but it's not gonna have everything. There are other solutions out there that do a similar thing, but may lack some other features and some of the elegance and some of the build quality. For example, the Odyssey Mobius does that. But the big thing with that is that that will actually work with any content whatsoever. So if you have two channel audio playing through it, it will do all the processing for that in the headphone itself. So you can use that with anything at all, whereas this is specific to the kind of Atmos 5.1 style of content. That being said, the AirPod Pros and Maxes are so popular and Apple is so huge that more content will inevitably be released for this. So the content pool is only gonna get larger, but it's unfortunate that this isn't something that can be turned on no matter what the content is. And Odyssey proved that that is possible, but Apple didn't seem to implement it that way. So right now, the biggest limitation for me is going to be the content that you can use it for. Okay, lightning round before we get into the most impressive feature of this. Uh, the battery life is consistent with what Apple advertises, which is better than I thought it would be. I actually thought it would be a little bit less, but it seems fairly well advertised. The EQ is constant, but unfortunately not adjustable as of right now via an app or the settings, unlike some of the other counterparts of similar classification of Bluetooth headphones. And the pairing and ease of use has been pretty good. Uh, the switching of devices has been pretty nice. The one and only thing that I don't personally love is how quickly this disconnects. So when you put this headphone on, it'll connect to whatever device you're connected to, but when you take it off, it will disconnect from that device. And then when you put it back on, it reconnects quickly, but that I wish it would wait maybe like 30 seconds before disconnecting. That way it's not going ba-doom, 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 ba-doom every time you take it off. and uh, put it back on. All of those features are cool. All of those features, if you're looking for them, do work well. All of those features should be a consideration in your purchasing decision for this device. But there is one thing that I think outshines all of that, but is going to be one of the least focused on features, but I think is actually the most impressive. And that's going to be the pass-through audio. So pass-through audio, it's not unique to the AirPod Max, but it is far better than everything else that I've heard that does this, including the AirPods Pro and including the XM4, which both have similar features. 
it's picking up through a series of microphones the world around you, right? And then it's gonna play that audio back. But what makes this stand out and is incredible with this is how realistic the placement of things are. So for example, a big goal for audiophile headphones has been to get speaker-like imaging where you get things that are actually shooting out in front of you like you're listening to an actual pair of speakers. What's weird about this headphone is when you're playing music through this, you don't get that. But if I put these on, don't listen to any music, and I just do the pass-through audio, and then I play music through a pair of speakers, I get speaker-like imaging, like realistic, out in front of me, speaker-like imaging. Now this to me is actually a big step up in technology. See, the Sonys don't work like that. They sound compressed, they sound like you're in a chamber, they work for directionality kinda, but the distance and the realism to it is just minimal. Whereas this is actually really, really close. Some quick notes on this mode. Uh, the dynamics are a little bit more compressed in real life. If someone's screaming in your ear, you're gonna hear them. It's gonna sound like they're yelling, but it's not gonna be as loud as real life. So this is good, but one thing that is a limitation in some of the realism factor, it's also a little bit brighter than real life is and a little bit less bassy than real life is. But the imaging and the positioning of things is awesome. Unfortunately, I've heard through talking to other people that this doesn't actually work that well for everybody. Now, I do recommend trying it out if you can. I know it's not always easy to do and not everybody has access to the same things as me, but if you can, try it and see how it works with you. Because it doesn't work perfectly for everybody, I would say that, you know, maybe calculate this a little bit in your purchasing decision if you do wanna buy this, but don't buy it specifically for this feature because there are other headphones that do it but maybe not do it as well and are less than half the cost like the XM4, for example. Now this is another improvement in the ever evolving saga of Apple headphones that get better and better with each generation. Now that being said, it's still well wrapped quite tightly in the Apple kind of house sound. So while it does have better quality, uh, I still think the base components of the sound quality are still pretty consistent with what you can expect from Apple. So what is better is it's got cleaner, clearer, and more precise low end. And it's actually a little bit more sparkly and a lot better defined than some of the previous iterations of Apple's headphones in the treble response. But I don't consider this to be a bright or an analytical headphone by any means. Um, this is not going to replace studio monitors, for example, at this price tag, nor do I think it competes dollar for dollar with equivalently priced full-size wired-in headphones that are made for audiophiles. But I do actually think that comparisons against those headphones are a bit unfair because they lack a lot of features that are a big reason as to why this headphone is so expensive. Now what I do struggle with is finding exactly what price I should be comparing the sound quality against. I think that this is ultimately gonna come down to what you are coming from, what headphones you were listening to before you got this. You know, if you're listening to some really high-end headphones, this is probably not gonna be that impressive, but if you're coming from Bose and Sony on the lower end of stuff, this might actually be quite a big jump in quality. And while I'm not gonna be extremely critical of it, I am still gonna be relatively critical of it because it is still an expensive product and I think expensive products have to perform well. Okay, the trouble response is a notable improvement over the AirPods Pro, for example. It's a little bit more forward and a little bit crispier, a lot better defined, and I actually find the tamper characteristics to be far better and more accurate on the Macs. I actually find the tamper coloration to be a little bit more emphasized, and especially metallics, don't don't sound nearly as plasticky as they can on the AirPods Pro. Again, this isn't gonna be as analytical on the top end as something like an HD 660S or a Bayer Dynamic DT 1990. It's not gonna quite be one as crispy or as resolving as those, but I do think that for more casual listeners, this is gonna be just fine in the trouble response. Though for me, I do find this to be a little bit too toned down, a little bit too dark, from what I would consider to be a perfect reference point. I'm curious how much total resolution you could actually get out of this driver with a custom EQ. Now the mid-range, unfortunately, is a little bit disappointing for me. This is an area that even cheaper headphones have really figured out, like the HD6XX, which is only $200, and that mid-range stomps on this mid-range all day, every day. Now the main problem I have with this is how the voices are represented. This headphone has kind of a lack of body, a lack of girth in the lower mid-range. So voices are not gonna be as full as they necessarily should be. 
and the top end is gonna create a, a very crispy, clearer vo voice sound, but it's really lacking some of that lower end body. Now, this is actually okay depending on how the sound stage and the staging of this headphone handles the voices. On some songs it's fine, on others it just kind of falls flat and voices seem like part of the music, but not really anything special. And for this price, I'm looking for basically everything to seem even a little bit special. Now overall, I think voices specifically are a little bit lacking in terms of, of delivery, but do sound really crispy and clear. So if you're into that more crispy, clear experience, that's gonna be very good for movies that have a lot of stuff going on, especially action sequences. You really want uh, those voices to kind of pop through and cut through a busy mix, and they can with this, but I just wish there was a little bit more to them. As far as faults, and this is totally something that could be uh, updated into this headphone to fix, uh, there is a little bit of a hotness to the S's, a tiny bit of sibilance um, at this price range that's not necessarily unique to this headphone, uh, but it isn't necessarily a good thing either. Now, one factor that is actually better than I anticipated was the bass response. So this has uh, an actually a pretty good bass response for a closed back Bluetooth headphone of this caliber. So I think a comparison is gonna set this up a little bit better. This headphone has a lot of sub bass and sub bass is generally defined as like below 50 or 60 or 70 Hertz. It's kind of lower in the frequency response. Um, it's like the really deep stuff that kind of rattles stuff. This headphone has a lot of mid bass. So this is a very kind of bloomy, boxy, and bleeding bass response actually that kind of covers up a lot of the lower mid range and even some of the sub bass that is in this. This is a very bloated, uh, quite, uh, not a very tight sound at all. The Max has a very tight bass response. So why I think the Max is so superior in terms of bass response, even though this is going to hit as a much bassier headphone, but I think it's to a fault. I think the Max has a clean enough upper bass response that it doesn't obstruct and bleed into the mid range. But the Max for being a closed back headphone, I think at this price, the, the sub bass response is actually really, really good and does compete closely, not quite to the level, but closely with full size regular headphones like the Sony Z7. So the imaging for the price is decent. I'm not gonna say it blows me away, but it is certainly not particularly bad at all, um, especially like the pass-through mode. I'm actually very, very impressed with that. But in terms of listening to music, I think the imaging is pretty decent. Now the sound staging to me is a little bit disappointing. So you even have the modes like the spatial audio, which is supposed to provide kind of a, an open sort of sound. I always feel like I'm in a very closed listening space with this thing. It always seems like it's very kind of shut down in terms of how far out things can get. Now, what is surprising to me is that the pass-through audio does not follow this at all. And is far better for sound staging than anything you can produce in the normal listening modes with music. And regarding how the spatial audio works with this is it does seem to me like a very closed off area of actual sound. It doesn't seem open-ended like some really good open back headphones can. But what the spatial audio is really good with is the directionality of that sound. But the actual distance factor is a little bit weak, I think. Okay, now a brief sort of comparison. The XM4, is a popular headphone at a little over half the cost of the AirPod Max. I think people might make a mistake here of comparing the spec sheet. So they'll see the battery life and the pass-through audio and the Bluetooth and the noise cancellation and this and that. But what comparing the spec sheets on the websites will not tell you is the quality difference between the two, the quality of the sound signature, the quality of the noise cancellation, the quality of the pass-through the connectivity quality. I think for me, and I've had a really good experience with the Max, all across the board, the quality is just better than that of the Sony, especially in my opinion, the sound signature. It's got a little bit more mid-range, a little bit more top end than that of the Sony. And I think the Max sounds quite a bit better and functions quite a bit better. I think the AirPod Max is better across the board, except for maybe a few features that are real minor like portability, even though both portability is pretty good. That being said, the comparison is unfair because of the, the massive differential in price being almost double. Okay, my conclusion, as an entire device, this is actually very enjoyable to use. It works, in my opinion, as advertised. It's got some limitations as expected and it outperforms my expectations in some areas, which was actually unexpected. Now I could pick apart the sound quality all day long and so could you. And if you're one of those people who are going to be doing that with this headphone, I probably wouldn't suggest that you buy it. Uh, the people I would suggest buy this are the people who are more focused in the features and the functionality as an overall device and not really any one specific feature. 
this thing's main staple, the main reason why I think it is a good device is because as a device, as a whole device overall, it actually performs really, really well. And this thing actually reminds me of a really nice Swiss Army knife. You know, not really the best at any particular job, but overall, it might be the right tool for the job, unless you're building a PC. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again, Jonathan, for sending this out. And until the next video, my name's Josh, signing off.